Welcome to day three of the 2021 AFC Champions League. While some groups are still to get underway, the teams in Group H play their second games today. And the first of our double header is between two match day one winners as Nagoya Grampers from Japan take on the Pohang Steelers at the Rajamangala Stadium in Bangkok. Well, we had monsoon conditions in Buriram last night for our game, but much better conditions here in Bangkok. Two teams neck and neck at the top of the table. Pohang top just on goal difference after a 2-0 win in their opening game. Johor Darul and Ratchburi, who will play each other later, yet to get off the mark. They will hope to get their campaigns underway a little bit later on today. You can see the humidity today, 82%. And already Kim Ji Dong, the Pohang Steelers coach, saying how much conditions will play a part in this tournament over the next few days and weeks. But he said his side are very slowly acclimatizing to things here in Thailand. I don't think we'll have a drinks break today. It has to be over 30 degrees for us to have the, the drinks break or the cooling break, whichever you wish to term it. But it's a first ever continental meeting between these two sides, two sides who've got great AFC Champions League Tradition, Massimo Ficadenti, the man in charge of Nagoya Grampus, currently second in the J-League. They are 18 points behind the leaders, Kawasaki Frontale, having played a game less. 11 wins in their 20 league matches so far, while Pohanga are lagging a little behind in the K-League as well. They're currently fifth. They are only eight points behind the leaders, Olsen Hyundai, who, of course, are the holders of the AFC Champions League. They get their campaign underway. Uh, very soon. We do see uh, one of the other groups in action today as well, Group H, which contains Jombuk Hyundai Motors, Changra United from Thailand, Tampines Rovers from Singapore, the first Singapore side for 11 years to play in the group stages, and Gamba Osaka from Japan. We saw Cerezo Osaka yesterday, their big city rivals. They got off to a victory. Those games coming up a little bit later on today. And as we said, it is a double header here with Johor Darul taking on Ratchaburi a little bit later on. Magnificent stadium here, the Rajamangala Stadium, the national stadium. Holds over 60,000 people on normal occasions, but no spectators allowed for these games in Thailand. We are using a couple of Stadiums in Uzbekistan, Tashkent, the venue for those games a little bit later on that we mentioned in Group H. It's the Nagoya Grampus captain, Tajiki Yonemoto. Change strip today for Pohang, who will play in light blue. It was a satisfactory performance in their opening game, according to the coach, Kim Ji Dong. Felt his side should have been more clinical in front of goal, despite the fact they came out with a 2-0 win. They did take an 11th minute lead, Tashti getting that early goal, which really helped settle them down a little bit. Ratchaburi didn't really threaten too much. Those are players not involved today. 30 now in the squads for this AFC Champions League in these COVID and coronavirus times, just in case there are any issues. Just 21 players named in the match day squads. Ten substitutes, five of which can be used during those points in the game. And most coaches so far in the two days previously have all utilised their five substitutes. It does mean, of course, you can change half your outfield lineup. And with these games coming every three days, it sometimes is just nice to get a, a few fresh legs. It was Boris Tashti, the Ukrainian, who scored the opening goal. Only previous goal had come from the penalty spot against Guangzhou back in April. He'll be pleased to get off the mark from open play. It's the expanded format this year, 40 teams for the first time in this competition. We know the 
identity of the eight teams from the Western section that qualified back in April. Five groups here, the top five automatically going through. Three of the best second place teams joining them, so it's not a given that you're going to go through if you finish in second place. Already some big names have fallen by the wayside. But these two certainly will hope to be among the shake-up in a couple of weeks' time when the groups are finalised. Three stadiums in Thailand, say so two in Uzbekistan. And we'll see debut a little bit later on. It's interesting watching the team arrivals with all the COVID protocols these days. The teams arriving on two separate coaches. Temperature taken as they enter the stadium and a, and a little sticker put on their accreditation to say that they've passed the, the temperature check as well. Substitutes wearing masks and socially distancing in the stands. It's rules and regulations these days, but essential, of course, to be safe that we can have football. And nice to see top flight football back on the agenda. Euro 2020 going on, of course, at the moment, a year later than normal, but we are seeing crowds back in the stadium and hopefully in the Asian section we will start to see crowds filtering back in sooner rather than later. Knockout stages will be played in September. Let's keep our fingers crossed by then that things have been proved suitably that fans can get in and support their teams. Talking of teams, let's take a look at the lineups. Massimo Ficcadenti makes five changes to the side that beat Johor Darul in their opening game. Kazuya Miyahara comes in at right back in place of Shumpai Naruz. The other four changes come in the attacking midfield area. Nagasawa, Yochiri, Naoki, and Manubu all come in. All five players that have come in today came off the bench in the first match. The five players to drop out are all among the substitutes. Turkey Aldaha from Saudi Arabia is the match referee, took charge of Korea Republic's 5 0 win over Turkmenistan recently. Pohang's captain, Kang Sang Woo, was in the squad but didn't feature in that game. He does lead his team as King Ji Dong makes two changes. Manuel Palacios picked up a knock in that first game. Obum Siok drops down to the bench. Lee Su Bin comes into midfield, as does Quan Ji Pyo. Both came on against Ratchaburi. And John Min Guang, their number four, on a yellow card, another for him, and he would miss the next match. Confirmation of the substitutes. Yogo Yamasaki, but Nagoya is also on a yellow card. Alex Grant there for Pohang, another player that came on late on in that opening match. Mitchell Langerak kept that wonderful clean sheet record in the J-League. It's a 30-year clean sheet record, nine in a row, 824 minutes without conceding a goal. And he kept a clean sheet in Nagoya's opening match against Jordarul. Late evening sunshine here in Thailand, just gone five o'clock in the evening and it will be the Pohang Steelers in light blue to get us underway, kicking from right to left in the first half. Nagoya Gramp, Grampus making their fourth appearance, they've always reached the knockout stages in their previous three. The Pohang Steelers, of course, the 2009 AFC Champions League winners. Two sides with rich tradition in their respective countries. 90 minutes of intense football coming up in the heat of Bangkok. And three more valuable points towards qualification up for grabs. Long ball already forward from... Quang Hoon, that'll be a first touch for the Pohang goalkeeper, Kang Hyun Moo. 
He is their first choice goalkeeper. He's played 17 out of their 18 K League games so far this season. As is Mitch Langerak. Massimo Ficcadente picked up a yellow card himself in that first game. The man who very much wears his heart on his sleeve. He was uh, nervous at times against Jehud Derol. It wasn't as clear cut as they would have liked. He took them to the hour mark to get the only goal of the game. Hiroyuki Abe, Abe rather, with the goal. Abe missing out today, dropping down to the bench. Comfortably gathered in by the goalkeeper. It is a first ever continental meeting between these two sides. Taka had a good game in that first match. He's solid at left back. Very well organised, the Nagoya Grampus side. Nagoya based up in. Northwestern Japan, a side with a rich history, of course, Arsene Wenger. The former Arsenal manager had great successes as coach. Gary Lineker was a, a former player when they were known as Grampus 8. That's a lovely ball down the line for Naoki. The players arriving. It looked like a potentially a little trip on the edge of the penalty area, but the, the referee who had a good position so nothing wrong, but he will have to halt play here. In a Gaki was that came flying through, just took a knock on the shin, I think, as he tried to get the shot in. It's good work out wide. You see the referee right on top of it. No uh, chance of getting a foul. Japanese and Korean sides always tend to be very technical. Sang Hyub. We thought Naoki might start in the centre. He looks as though he started out wide. Manubu and Yoichiro, the other three players in that forward line. Nagaki. Was you a Chiro? Wants his side a throw. Nagaki just trying to feed it through. Nagori have started well here. Trying to keep the ball inside the Korean half. Nagasawa. Nice little touch from Tashti. It's a typical European striker, Tashti. Good in the air, good on the ground. Started his career in the Ukraine with Juna Moretz. Got another Eastern European in Mario Kvesic just behind in the Bosnia Herzegovina midfielder. It's a foul by Tashti. Little nudge in the back of the captain, Yonamoto. So he had scored just the one game. He joined Pohang at the start of the 2021 season. 
had played most of his career in Germany. Stuttgart, Duisburg and San Pauli. It's his first goal from open play in that first match. Naoki caught in possession. Sankyo. Kimoto back to his goalkeeper, Langarek, the Australian. Kim Ji Dong has guided his side to this competition the first time since 2016 they did finish bottom of the group the last time they were in the group stages they had just the one win over Urawa with Red Diamonds also in the group with Sydney FC and Guangzhou Evergrande Guangzhou FC as they're known now in this competition they got their campaign underway yesterday with a win uh, with a defeat rather no Australian sides in the competition of course they had to pull out due to the current COVID situation has been quite a lot of reorganization to do for the AFC over the last few months or so with sides having to drop out and being unable to travel lots of landmarks to look forward to as well we've got two Philippine sides playing in the group stages as they uh, make their competition debut United FC had already booked a place but a couple of days ago KFC won a playoff against Shanghai Port. Tampines Rovers here in action this afternoon, becoming the first Singapore side for 11 years to play in the group stages. Always interesting to see the matchup of styles as well, despite the fact that all the sides are in the same region, but different countries adopting different ways to play the game. So we know the Japanese and the Koreans are always very technical. Very methodical, particularly the Koreans. Remember that fantastic run the Korea Republic had in the World Cup back in 2002 under Gus Hiddink when the whole country was literally bathed in a sea of red. I remember being there and games being beamed onto the side of skyscraper buildings and lanes cut off in the street so fans could sit in the road literally and watch the games. It was quite an incredible thing to be a part of. And the Koreans, of course, will be eager to impress at international level. They beat Turkmenistan. So today's referee was in charge of that. One of five nil win for the Korea Republic. That man there was in the squad but didn't play. Sang Woo. Part of Korea's under 20 team that played in the 2013 World Cup in Turkey. and a Goya free kick given away by Subin. It's just a clumsy challenge. He doesn't really need to make that challenge, Subin. The Goya were actually going away from goal. See already that Inagaki coming to take some water on. We've only played nine minutes. That shows how hot and humid it is here today. 82% humidity. Really will sap the energy of the players as the game wears on. Naoki with the free kick then for Nagoya. Just two in the wall. It's a deep one. It's snotty, but no one reacted in the middle. Kimoto was the closest player to it. I think he thought the ball was possibly sailing out of play. It was kept in the goalkeeper, Hyun Moo. Half came and then changed his mind. Could have been a lot worse there for Po Hang, but they survive. Kvezic. Good ball angle towards the run of Sang Hyun, but a comfortable header from Kazuya back to his goalkeeper.
after all their great and rich tradition, Nagoya, they haven't appeared in the group stages of this competition since 2012. Did reach the round of 16 then, they finished second in their group, they lost out to Adelaide United by a single goal in the round of 16. New tackers throw. He's looking for some movement, he's got it now from Inagaki. Manubu. Good positive run from Manubu, still going! Tried to curl it in, it comes back off the post. But he had players in the centre, but he only had his eyes on goal there, Manubu Sato. Just clipped the bar. Tried to bend it in that far corner and very nearly succeeded. Came on right at the end in the 94th minute. In the opening game, it was one of those substitutes just to run the clock down against Joe Derulle. Getting his start today and looking to make a name for himself, and he very nearly did that. Nagoya have a corner in the ascendancy at the moment. Comes out to Inagaki, who completely missed his kick. There's a a Pohang player down, but they'll continue to break here with Kvesic. Now the referee's whistle goes with Naoki in possession. GPO, the player that was just caught. Yeah, just caught a, a stud to the knee. I think they're from Kazuya. He's OK. One of those players coming into the starting lineup today. Hadn't played for Pohang since 2018, had a couple of loan spells at Seoul Eland and FC Anyang. The number 88, Quan GPO. And by Sang Wu is Kvesic. Good positive run, he too going for a, a curler, took a deflection. And at the other end, Pohang will have their first corner of the game. Applause from Kim Ji Dong, the coach. Man who made his debut as a midfielder for Pohang back in 1991. They were known as Posco Atoms back then, after the iron and steel company that owned them. Still sponsored, as you see, by the same company. That was a straight from his graduation in high school. He went straight to the Pohan Club. In the corner here from Shin Jin Yo. Doing the zonal marking, Nagoya Grampus, which can always be a bit problematic. You can see four players in space. That's a good header from Ming Wang, but couldn't get any downward force on the ball. He goes over the top. You see the Nagoya players all in a group. Ming Wang got between two of them. It wasn't a bad header in the end. Never really sure about the zonal marking from corners. A lot of top quality strikers these days have very clever movement and it's very difficult if you're not man-to-man -man marking to actually track where they're moving to. Mitchell Langerak not called into action as yet. Wen Q's header. It's well done by Subin, goes out off Inagaki. Korea Republic and Japan make up the countries that have won the AFC Champions League the most. 12 Korean winners in the past, seven from Japan. 25 times the Eastern section has triumphed in this competition. Very much got the edge over their Western rivals. In fact, Pohang, having won it three times, has been matched by 
Al Halal, who've also won it three. Al Halal, though, have finished runners up on four occasions. Subin. Straight to Inagaki, it was a little bit clumsy. Hyun Mu opting to clear long this time. Kvezic. Sankyub. Subin. Jin Hyo. Kvezic covering plenty of ground at the moment. Quang Hoon. Need to get the ball into the box. It comes in now from Kvezic. It's in behind. Tashti and Sankyub. It's kept in by Naoki. Massimo Ficadenti patrolled in that technical area. Let's really kick every ball with his team, the 53-year-old. Sankyub. It's a great ball and it's just too high for Tashti. But Gipio did manage to get a header on it. Just grazed his forehead. No trouble for the goalkeeper. If that's half a metre lower, Tashti could well have met that, but just a little bit too high for him. Still goalless. 17 and a half minutes gone in the opening game of the day in Group H. A Group G, rather. Group H is coming up a little bit later on. towards Tashti again, Kimoto just ducked underneath it. Kazuya just rides the challenge of Sang Hyub. Now Yonemoto, Naoki. Played crossfield by Inagaki, this is Yutaka. Manubu, Yutaka's continued his run. Just needed a little bit taken off there for Yutaka who He's always happy to get forward from full-back. Just in his third season at Nagoya. Shinosuke. Manubu. Nagasawa wins the corner. Good defending. It's interesting to watch defenders these days in that situation. You have to learn almost these days to run with your arms behind your back because of the, the handball rules, of course, and how they've changed over the years. Very much down to interpretation, handball. The rules have changed slightly for next season. A bit of tweaking by... The IFAB. That's a Nagoya corner. Headed away by Jin Ho. Yutaka. Nice ball down the line for Nagasawa if he can reach it. Good covering though by Ming Wang. Thank you. 
Nakasara and Quang Hu having a, a little bit of a tussle between them. Yutaka, comfortably away by Jin Ho. Kazuya, well closed down by Sang Hyub. Very hard working side, these Koreans. So, in this humidity, it may well sap the energy. Coach will be looking to use those changes in the second half. Jipyo. Subin. And the captain, Sang Wu. Tashti on the chase, just offside though. We don't have VAR for the group stages. VAR will be implemented a little bit later on in the competition when we reach the knockout stages. Quarterfinals onwards, I think. He's just offside there. Boris Tashti. Shiri will have been watching on at the European Championships with Ukraine in action. I'm sure he'd like to emulate his one of his heroes, I'm sure. And in charge of Ukraine these days, Andrei Shevchenko. Ukraine playing Sweden on Tuesday in their next match in that particular competition. Might be quite late for him though, it is 9 o'clock kickoff in Glasgow, which will be at 4 a 4am in the morning on the 29th. Goals here past the midway point of the first half. Kim Ji Dong, who's a former career under 23 assistant coach, was a player with Po Hang in 2009 when they won the AFC Champions League. The coach, two time K League winner, knows all about success now, trying to guide his team to success. He was the K League manager of the year in 2020. Forty-nine years of age, just approaching the half century. Knows what he wants from his side as well. Shinosuke, Nakimoto, Kazuya. Kimoto. It's all in front at the moment. Nobody really trying to get in behind either defence. It's fairly comfortable for those midfielders just to keep working. Eventually, you might see some a mistake like that, but it will be a free kick. Lee Su Bin. The man penalised. Just a little tug back on Nagasawa. Not too much in it. They were relegated a few seasons ago, Nagoya. This is their fourth season back in the J-League. Finished in 15th in their first season back in 2018, 13th in 2019, and then third last season. So it's been a, a gradual improvement since their promotion back under Massimo Mofi Cadenti. 
Might have a chance here, away by Ming Wang. Only as far as Yutaka. Nakimoto. Kazuya, looked like a foul by Sangwu, the referee. So nothing wrong with it from the Pohan captain. Shinosuke. Tashti. Hasn't seen too much of the ball. He's had to come deep to win it back for himself. That's a lovely ball. And a bit of a break on here for Gipio. He's only got one in the centre. Still going. Brilliant challenge from Kimoto. Well, the first time we've seen Pohang have numbers forward. But a saving tackle from Yasuki Kimoto. Now Naoki. He's got Kazuya outside him. Well, Acts as a bit of a decoy. Tries to play the little give and go. Sang Wu in two minds as to what to do. Thought about playing it back to his keeper. Realised that might be somewhat problematic. Well, they played themselves out of trouble well. Tashti. Jin Ho. Jin Ho again. GPO just in space over on that far side. The man who had that run a moment or so ago. It's the most direct we've seen the Koreans so far inside the opening 27 minutes. Sangwoo. Sangwoo. Just a heavy touch allowed Naoki to guide it back to his goalkeeper. Wang Qi. Now Ming Wang. Nicely brought under control away by Yonemoto. Jin Ho. Sang Hyub. Trying to spin away from his man, but Kazuya stuck to his guns. No real clear-cut chances as yet. Did see that one shot from Manubu as he cut him from that far side, which hit the bar. That's closest we've come, but neither goalkeeper really forced into a save of any great note. Mitchell Langerak has been virtually, virtually a spectator so far. Gipio tries his luck, Langerak turns it wide, got a good hand on that and had to as well. Well, we are having a, a drinks break because of the, uh, the heat and humidity, but Gipio forcing the first save, just as we were saying, Langerak hadn't been called into action. Well, he has now, and that was a slight deflection as well, possibly off Shinosuke. Langerak getting a fingertip to it to turn it behind for the corner. 
Well, I'll take a little bit of heart from that, Pohang, because they were struggling to break down this Nagoya Grampus back four. The man who kept that wonderful clean sheet record, but I'm sure he was quick to pay testament to the defenders in front of him as well. Goalkeepers often get the credit for clean sheets, of course, but it is a, a team effort as a defence. Boris Tashti hasn't had too much in terms of chances as yet. Massimo Ficcadenti, who replaced your hero Kazama back in September 2019 after the side finished in 15th place. Played as a midfielder in his playing days, mainly for Verona and Torino. Pohang Steelers with a corner, Sangwoo the captain will swing this one over, Tashti will be one of the targets. Good shot from Langerak. Heard that from up here, the shout of keeper. More of the ball so far. Nagoya. Both sides have managed just one effort on target so far. Might be another one here. Oh, oh brilliant! Wonderful goal, and the Goya Grampus take the lead. Your Chiro with a fine strike beyond Hyun Mu. And from their goalkeeper making a good save at the other end a few moments or so ago, it's the Goya Grampus that have gone in front. And it's a fine strike from your Chiro Kati Kakitani. Brilliantly done. Only one thing on his mind, turned away, had space to get the shot in. And didn't he execute it well? Came off the bench in the first match, the 31-year-old. Just two goals in the J-League this season. Actually scored a spectacular goal for Korea against France from the halfway line back in 2007 at the Under-17 World Cup in Korea. It's not quite the halfway line, but it's a long way out. And it always had to be something a bit special to beat the goalkeeper from that sort of range. Fine, fine goal. Nagoya lead. And they're back on the attack once again with Manubu. Here is Manubu. Well, cutting in again as he did before when he hit the top of the post and bar this time. Pohang have managed to shepherd the ball away, but Nagoya lifted by that goal. Well, the game was crying out for a little bit of quality, and it has just that from Yuichiro. Foul by Sang Wu. Tell he was a prospect early on in his career, Yuichiro Kakitani. He actually signed for Sorezo Osaka when he was four years of age. It's Kazuya. He 
Yonemoto. And Kimoto. Inagaki. First goal that Pohang have conceded in this season's competition. Both sides kept clean sheets in their opening victories. Yonemoto. Nagasawa won't quite reach that. Here's the goal again. Turned away, made space for himself, and couldn't have finished that any better. And he can rightly afford himself a smile. Nagoya Grampus leading by a goal to nil. And certainly looking the more threatening as well, still. Naoki into the corner of Sangwu. Had won two in a row in the K-League before coming into this Pohang. Just one defeat in their last four matches. That was against Olsen Hyundai by a single goal. The current holders of this competition. That's in Agaki's ball in. Comes to nothing, though. Goya Grampus's successes this season have been built on a, a solid defence. They got the J League campaign off to a, way, a winning start. Six games in a row they won at the start of the season. Five of those by a single goal, four of them 1 0. So that's the kind of thing that Pohang have got to work with here. That's Yutaka with a foul. Just caught Gipio as he cuts inside. Yeah, Yutaka, Shinosuke, Kimoto and Kazuya with Langaret behind them make a, a formidable back line. Pohang might have to be a little bit creative to try and break them down. They've got a free kick here. Sankub's in there, Tashti. Dungoya trying to hold the line as high as they can. Quang Hoon has picked up a yellow card there. Not too sure what that was for because the free kick went Po Hang Steeler's way. If you do pick up two yellow cards in separate matches, you would be suspended for the next match. That's Quang Hoon's first yellow of the tournament. Subin. Wenq. Jinho. Good ball, Gipio. Yotuka had to get the challenge in and did. Just looked like he might open up for Pohang there. Gipio coming into the starting lineup as look useful out on that far side, cutting inside. Only had four minutes in the opening game against Ratchbury. Foul on Jin Ho, so another free kick to the side from the Korean Republic. Machiro, the goal scorer, going back on defensive duties. Stay up is the shot from Mitch Langerak. Hold that line. It'll be a corner off the head of Kimoto. Oh, 
Well, half time looming, Pohang would love to get a goal back before half time. It's just one defeat in 12 games now for the Koreans, if you take into account their first match a couple of days ago. Sang Hyuk, the furthest man forward, it's not a great corner, followed away by Naoki. Not a great clearance because he's given another corner away. It's almost inviting Jin Ho to have another go. It's infuriating for coaches and players alike when players don't miss out that front man from a corner. That's better. Langerak, good strong punch away, only as far as Sang Woo. Can't keep the shot down. Probably not the right decision there to try and have a go. Goldwood's had time to maybe bring that one down under control, the captain, but just had a little bit of a rush of blood. Good goalkeeping by Langerak into that crowd of players. Did have another unwanted record against his name, Mitch Langerak. He conceded the fastest goal in the history of the Bundesliga after just nine seconds against Bayer Leverkusen back in. 2014-2015, when he was at Borussia Dortmund. It's since been equaled by... Oh, scored, rather, by Karim Bellarabi. Since been equaled by Kevin Folland, who scored for Hoffenheim against Bayern two seasons after that. Nine seconds to take the lead. Chase on here for Kvezic, who hasn't seen much of the ball in this first half. Jin Ho. Chipio is the target. Yutaka was there, but Jin Ho got the better. Headed back to Langerak. I think Nagoya will be happy just to get through to half time now with a, a single goal lead. This game far from over though. Pohang have shown on odd occasions that they can threaten, mainly from set pieces in the first half. Langerak forced into just that one save. Just a couple of moments before they took the lead through Yochiro. Shinosuke. Yonemoto. Played back by Manubu, who now sets off on a forward run. He was looking for a long ball played over the top there, Manubu. Inagaki. Shinosuke, now Yonemoto. It's far by Su Bin, GPO. Seemed to have won the ball cleanly. It was the first one that the referee pulled back for the free kick. Inagaki. Two minutes to be added at the end of the first half. That due in part to the drinks break that we have around about the half hour mark. Shinosuke. Yonemoto. It's a wayward ball into the corner from Yutaka. Be a goal kick.
Well, Kim Ji Dong, who said he was just satisfied with his team's performance in the first match, will have work to do here at half time to try and lift his side spirits for the second half. He need to show a little bit more teeth going forward. This is Tashti. Again, he hasn't really got in the game. So Kvezic in midfield has looked promising when he's on the ball, but he hasn't seen too much of the ball in the first half. Kvezic trying to slip that one through to Gipio. Quite fine, it's intended target. Good defending by Yonemoto to shepherd that one away. Subin was strong, but not quite strong enough. Game has been pretty much played in the middle third in the first half. Pohang have been on the back foot a little bit. Nagoya have spent more time in the Pohang penalty area than the other way around. That's something that will need to change in the second half for sure. Well, two minutes up, and the referee brings to a half, or to a close, a half that took a little while to get going, but when he did, he was illuminated by a wonderful goal. Yochiro Kakitani with a brilliant strike from outside the penalty area beyond Hyun Mu. And his strike worthy. Well, worthy of winning a match, really, but still a long way to go before we can get to that situation. But Yachiro Kakatani's goal has put the Japanese side, Nagoya Grampus, one up at half time. At the break here at the Rajamount Gala Stadium, it's Nagoya Grampus, one, FC Pohang Steelers, nil.
Welcome back to the Rajamangala Stadium. Teams on the way out for the second half. It looks as though Pohang will be making a change. Alex Grant there just going through the picture. Nagoya Grampus leading by a goal to nil. That wonderful strike from Yochiro Kakitani in the 34th minute. Always going to take something a little bit special to beat the goalkeeper, Hyun Mu. Two very good goalkeepers on view today. Kim Ji Dong, who wanted more from his team tonight after that opening day win. CC side having to chase the game here in the second half. It is a first ever meeting between these two sides. In fact, it looks like a triple change for the Steelers. Just see the substitutes standing away there, waiting to join the huddle. I always feel a bit sorry for the fourth official when sides make so many changes in one go. Tashti has gone off. Lee Seung Mo is on. Jipio, who I thought he had a good first half actually, has gone off, and Alex Grant has come on to replace him. has gone in at left back it means Sang Wu will push forward we'll confirm the other change for you in a moment no changes it would appear for Nagoya Grampus at half time so it is the Japanese that get a send away for the second half leading here by a goal to nil goal coming 11 minutes before half time He had very little service in that first half, so Lee Seung Mo will hope to have a little better. Hasn't scored in the K League this season. Sang Hyub is penalised. Running by Sungmo, the substitute. Just looking to add a slightly different dimension in the second half. Probably feel that everything was in front of the Nagoya defence. If they could get in behind here. Go Young Jun is the other substitute, just trying to put Shinosuke under a little bit of pressure. Nagas Nagasawa. Manubu. Hit the bar early on. Manubu. Yatuka's ball over the top, looking for the run of Finagaki, but. Just too much on it, races into touch. Nothing that Kang Hyun Mu could do with the goal. It's a very well struck shot from Uchiro.
The other player that's gone off, by the way, is Mario Kvesic. So two of the foreigners have been taken off now by Pohang Steelers. See what those changes do to the shape in the second half. Teams are allowed four foreigners in this competition, slightly less than they're allowed in some of the leagues. Foul on Sangwu. Yeah, just led with the arm a little there, Shinosuke. Not too much in it. It'll beat Sang Hyubin to touch away on the far side. Matches uh, three and four are the reverse game. So next two games for Nagoya Grampus will be against Ratchaburi, the team from Thailand, while Pohang Steelers will take on Jo Darul from Malaysia. Alex Grant there coming on at half time. First season at Pohang, just made one substitute appearance in the K-League. And he was born in Manchester, played for Portsmouth and Stoke, although didn't make a first-team appearance for either. Came on after 57 minutes in the first game, so slightly longer for him to try and have an impact at full-back. As you tack a penalise once again. Just mistimed it. I think Sangwoo knew he was coming. It was oh, he's got a yellow card as well, Yutaka. Second yellow card of the game follows Quang Hoon into the book, who was yellow carded in the first half. Thank you. Jin Ho. Uh, Ming Wang. Just pressing that high line at the moment, Nagoya. Just trying to keep Po Hang Peg back in their own half when the ball does go back towards the goalkeeper. And that will be another yellow card, I think. Cynical challenge from Nagasawa. Realised that he was on the way down and that Kang Hoon was going past him. Nagasawa becomes the second Nagoya player in quick succession to receive a yellow card. He was slightly off balance when he made the challenge, but I think he knew what he was doing. Quang Hoon would have had a clear path down towards the corner flag had he not made that foul. Goya, known as the noble barbarian. He's Sung Mo. And their name is derived from two of the most prominent symbols in Nagoya. The two golden Grampus dolphins on top of Nagoya Castle and the Maruchi Hachi Circle of Eight, which is Nagoya Grampus, Nagoya Grampus Eight, of course, is the official full title. Those are the symbols of the city. One of the original ten members of the J League. Forward by Yutaka. Comes off Nagasawa. Haven't seen too much in an attacking sense from Pohang yet in the second half. Still very early days, of course. Quang Hoon. And that one towards 
Subin. Stand forward by Grant. A little bit too much on it, though. Kimoto wasn't too sure where his goalkeeper was. And Kazuya will just relieve the pressure and head it back to Langarak. Ji Dong there, just on the edge of his technical area, played over 500 appearances in the K-League. It's the fifth highest in terms of K-League appearances. Kim Byung Ji, former goalkeeper who made over 700 K-League appearances, actually played with Kim Ji Dong at the Steelers. Nagoya about to make themselves a double change. Ryogo Yamasaki and Yukisoma preparing to come on. Quang Hoon. Xiong Mo. Fouled again by Yutaka. There might be a chance to swing this one over now. They've lost the aerial threat of Tashti in the second half. But Grant is a big aerial presence. Wen Q and Ming Wang. Also coming forward. A couple of times we've seen Langerak already dominate his area. Three changes to come. Soma's on for Nagasawa. Referee just wants to get the substitute sorted before the free kick can be taken. It's unusual to see substitutions made when you're on a defensive situation, but that's what Nagoya are doing at the moment. So Soma comes on. Yamasaki is on as well. Naoki and Manubu are the other players to go off. Mateus, the Brazilian, is the other player to come on. Good run. Good defending again. Sang Hyub is dangerous when he gets the ball at his feet. Really pacey player. Kimoto stayed with him all the way and got the challenge in. He's gone for a corner. Let's see how those three substitution, substitutions change the, the shape and the formation for Nagoya. They've got another corner to defend here. Grant's forward for this, so too Ming Wang. It'll be Sang Wu, the captain. Once again, it's that zonal marking. It's in towards Grant. He drops over him. And Wang Qiu didn't quite manage to react inside the penalty area. You could see his reaction. Came to him very late. He would have been unsighted. Forward by Quang Hoon. Blue shirt staying forward. Not a good ball, though. Away by Yonemoto. Helped on by Yochiro. Here he is again, the goal scorer. Yamasaki playing off the shoulder of the last man. That's a good ball in behind the Pohang Steelers defence. Now he'll run at Alex Grant. Gets the shot in. Keeper looked to have got down slowly to that one, but managed to grab on. Hold of it, Hyun Miu. First touch for Yamasaki, and it's almost a telling one as well. Goalkeeper defended his near post well. No goalkeeper likes to be beaten there. Hasn't had too many saves to make 
in the match so far, Kang Hyun Myu. Inagaki. Little trip by Yamasaki, and a free kick to Po Hang, Jin Ho, the man fouled. Double team there, I think, by two of the Nagoya Grampus players. Challenge on Sunosuke by Seung Mo. Well, heavy for the referees liking anyway. <laughs> We'd love another goal. Massimo Ficadenti. His side had to endure a nervy 30 minutes in their first game against Jordarul. Kimoto. Busy day of AFC Champions League action today. Johor Darul and Ratchaburi will be in action in this group, in this stadium, a little bit later on, and the debut of locomotive stadium in Tashkent the other venue for two of the groups in the group stages of the AFC Champions League it's Jumbo Hyundai Motors against Changra United that's in the Bunyador Stadium and then Tampines Rovers from Singapore against Gamba Osaka both those games in Group H at the moment Nagoya Grampus are going three points clear at the top if they can hold on to the win. Yamasaki, the man who came on just a few moments or so ago, will be one of the targets here. More man-to-man -man marking from Pohang Steelers rather than the zonal marking we saw at the other end. Yamasaki with the overhead, well wide. Hasn't scored for seven games, Yamasaki. We saw Mateus, the Brazilian there, one of the players that was left out today, started the first game against Jordarul. Edging the passes and Edging the possession at the moment, Nagoya Grampus. Both sides have made three of their five changes. There's your Chiro trying to emulate his feet to the first half. Well wide and high this time. Did train with Arsenal and Inter Milan's youth teams early on in his career. Your Chiro Kakitani spent two years in Switzerland at FC Basel. It's a player who's shown plenty of promise throughout his career. He's 31 years of age now, Yojiro. Foul on Yonemoto, the Nagoya Grampus captain. And Shinosuke will take the free kick. Yeah. 
Ming Wang. Didn't head that one away very far. This is your Chiro. A little bit of space. Yamazaki! Shot took a deflection. Handball. Referee right on the spot. Saw it clearly. Hyun Mu grabbed the ball, but it has struck the arm of the Pohang defender. Well, as Yamasaki's hit the shot, yeah, Kwang Hoon with the elbow, that's a good decision. Right in front of goal, you'll see it from here. Clearly strikes the arm of Shin Kwang Hoon. And a chance here for Nagoya Grampus to double their advantage from the penalty spot. Well, it's going to be a yellow card, I think, for Kwang Hoon, is it? Because if it is, he was booked in the first half. That means he'll play no further part. And he has been sent off. Shin Kwang Hoon. So Po Hang's day could well go from bad to worse here. They're down to ten men. And they face a penalty. Can Hyun Mu keep them in the game? First red card of the AFC Champions League group stages. An unwanted stat for Quang Hoon, and it's going to be Mateus, the Brazilian, who only came on a few moments or so ago, who's going to take the penalty. Did score six times in the J-League, or has scored six times in the J-League, rather. Referee just warning the encroachment. Goalkeeper has to have one foot on the line when the ball is struck. And it is Mateus against Hyun Mu to make it 2-0. Goalkeeper got a hand to it, but there's too much pace on the ball from the Brazilian. And Nagoya Grampus have some breathing space over their Korean opponents. But it's a good effort, he guessed right. Hyun Mu. But I think that's the first time Mateus has touched the ball. And lucky for the goalkeeper, you can see his reaction, but there was so much pace on that from Mateus. We know all about Brazilians' prowess from set pieces, of course, over the years. Not one of the more famous Brazilians, Mateus, but among the Nagoya Grampus fans, he, he's certainly endearing himself with his goals, and that's a goal that, barring any major disasters, will keep up their 100% record so far. And they're back on the attack once again with Yochiro. Alex Grant fouls Mateus, so it will be a free kick. Down to ten men as well, don't forget now. The Steelers. There's another Nagoya player down here. We saw quite a lot of cramp around yesterday with this high heat and humidity. It's very easy for Cramp to creep in later on in the matches. Well, it's missed time by Grant, just caught the leg of Mateus. You could see he was going for the ball, but clipped him on the ankle. Yellow card for Alex Grant. More defending to do. Had only made one appearance for the Steelers, prior to this competition, came off the bench against Incheon United back in February. Actually came on after 64 minutes and was brought off after 83 after picking up a knock, so... Hasn't had too many minutes under his belt for Pohang so far. And he's got some defending to do here. To try and keep this score down at 2-0. It's Mateus well over the top this time. We mentioned Brazilian free kicks and Brazilian greats. That's not one that will be remembered. Instantly forgotten from Mateus, but his penalty just a moment or so ago. Putting Nagoya into a two-goal lead. So they've never failed to make the round of 16 in their previous three appearances in the competition. 2009, they came through a group with Newcastle Jets, Olsen, Hyundai and Beijing Guan. Lost out 8-3 on aggregate to 
Al Itihad. They lost 6 2 in the second leg in that one. It was a heavy defeat for them back in 2009. Lost out to Suwon Blue Wings in 2011. And in their last appearance, it was a single goal from Adelaide United that put pay to their chances of making the quarter finals. Sung Mo. Pohang haven't really threatened Langarak's goal apart from that one shot in the first half that saw the Australian keeper tip the ball wide. They just lack that cutting edge. Sung Mo. Sang Hyub still working hard. They're looking comfortable at the back. Are well, they heading for a second clean sheet here? Nagoya Grampus. And it's difficult to see teams being able to work out how to break them down. As we said earlier on, they've got Langarak who kept that wonderful clean sheet record. 824 minutes without conceding a goal. Kazuya Kimoto, Shinosuke and Yutaka in front of him. And then had that very well organized midfield as well. It's very, very difficult for sides to break them down. Here's Inagaki. Soma. One of the three substitutes. Yuka Soma. He's actually part of the Japan Under-23 team that recently qualified through the AFC Under-23 championships that were played here. The final was in this stadium. It means that uh, Japan, of course, already in the Olympics. Korea got through as well. Great for Soma to represent his country in such a high-profile event. The Olympics in Tokyo starting in just a few weeks' time. Just a, a few, about 10 days or so after this competition finishes, the final games in the group stage is on the 11th of July. Here's Soma once again. Very highly rated, the 24-year-old. Oh, he's done well. He's away from Sangwo, the captain. Can't pick out a red shirt in the centre, though. That's in towards Yamasaki. Little nudge in the back of Alex Grant. It'll be a free kick to Pohang. Just a reminder once again that it is only the top team in each group that's guaranteed a place in the knockout stages of the competition. The three best second-place teams will join them. Strong work again by Yutaka, drawing the foul off Ming Wang. Real wrestling match going on between those two. Yutaka. Inagaki. Yutaka. Soma. Uh, Yamazaki, rather. Soma just hugging the touchline still. Yamasaki. Yonemoto. Bit of space here for Kazuya. Mateus. It's a heavy touch, allowed Jin Ho a chance, but he still maintains possession here, Mateus. Now Soma. Can he come up with a better ball into the penalty area this time? Mateus has stayed down. The referee opted to play the advantage. Here's Yutaka. Reminder of those teams that qualified for the, the Western section, some big teams with great AFC Champions League pedigree. The likes of Istiklal from Tajikistan, Tractor Estigal and Persepolis from Iran. Persepolis, the beaten finalists last year. 
Al Wada from UAE who had to pull out of the competition last year due to the COVID issues and Sharjah from the UAE as well. And Adin Al Hilal and Al Nazar, two Saudi Arabian clubs with great tradition. They'll be eagerly awaiting to see the eight teams that go through from this section. Of course, they play each other in the round of 16. Jin Hyo coming off and Run Siong is the man coming on. Is your attacker? That's so Trip on Yamasaki. I have to say, he's looked lively since coming on. Yamasaki in the second half. I mentioned those matches. There are some intriguing matchups. There's an all UAE clash between Sharjah and Al Wada, and an all Iranian clash between Istiklal and Persepolis. Those games have been played in September. <laughs> Mateus with a free kick. Two players, I think, in offside position said that found its way in, but it's wide of the target. So water break in the second half, quarter of an hour to go just over here in Buranam. In at Bangkok, rather. And Nagoya Grampus went on their way to a second successive victory. Just a single goal in their opening game. It was nervy in the final half an hour for them, but they're a little bit more relaxed here. Now they've got that second goal from the Mateus penalty. Quang Hoon sent off for the Pohang Steelers. Sides play again, as we mentioned earlier on, in three days' time. Nagoya Grampus will play Ratchaburi, while Pohang Steelers will play Jordarul Tazim from Malaysia. Hasn't had much to do, Mitchell Langerak. So Yamasaki's looked lively since coming on as a sub. And another sub with an impact immediately with his first touch, Mateus with the penalty. And Massimo Ficadenti edging towards another victory. Great goal kick, he was taken comfortably on the chest by Yonemoto. Yazuka. Sliced out of play, though. The game just going through a little bit of a, a scrappy stage at the moment. That second goal has really taken the sting out of everything. So if you look at the numbers, then, Nagoya are good for their win, 56% of the possession for them. 12 shots, four of them on target, just the one shot on target for Pohang Steelers, which tells its own story. They took off their central striker, Tashti, at half-time. Brought on Sung Mo, who's worked hard, but didn't score in 16 appearances in the K-League. Allowed to run through to Yamasaki. Is Soma, angle was tight and he can only find the side netting. Well, probably feel he should have done a little better with that. Yuki Soma. Alex Grant came across, I think he knew that Grant was coming across to make the challenge.
Ming Wang's header. Oh, head injury here, clash of heads between the two. Oh, painful one, that your Chiro. Here's the Nagoya player down. Did play in two editions of the AFC Champions League with Soretsu Osaka, his former club. Actually scored against Pohang Steelers in the first of those in 2014, as he has done here tonight. That wonderful goal in the first half, the, well, arguably the goal of the tournament so far in the opening stages. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come over the next few weeks. Moment of quality to light up the first half from Yuichiro. Young Jun. Uh, Grant. Look at their K-League performance this season, Pohang. They only scored 20 goals in 18 games, which is what's been hindering them here, really. Son Ming Kyu is their leading scorer, seven goals in the K League. He's not fit to start at the moment, though. I hope to get him back fit because they really are lacking up front at the moment. Tashti has worked hard in the time that he spent on the pitch, but he only managed half a game today. Kvezic behind him, the same as. Just lack that little bit of creativity that's probably expected of him from the coach, Kim Ji Dong. We might have a chance here, though, from a free kick. Grant will go forward for this. It'll be taken by Kang Sang Woo, the captain. All about the delivery. It's too close to the goalkeeper again. Poor delivery. When you've got a goalkeeper of Mitchell Langerak's quality, you don't put the ball that close to him because he will claim the ball every time. He's a very commanding goalkeeper. Very positive in the way that he attacks the ball when it comes into his area. It's Kimoto inside the final. Nine minutes of the match, Mateus, Yamasaki, Mateus, still going, good low shot, in off the post, and the substitute has his second goal of the game. Well, Nagoya easing their way through now, and the margin of victory, just putting their stamp on a game that they've dominated really from start to finish in terms of possession and passing. And now their shots on goal target keeps racking up. It was a nice touch. Just managed to wait for the ball to come out of his feet and placed it well out of the reach of Hyun Mu. And Nagoya Grampus are making a statement here in their second group game. They lead now by three goals to nil. Had gone three games without a goal coming into the tournament. Mateus having scored a couple against Chimzu Espols just a few matches ago. 
scored nine goals last season in the K-League, all of them coming in separate matches, so for him to get two in a match is a, a little bit of a rarity, but a welcome one for Nagoya Grampus. Mateus Castro, who played 11 games on loan at Yokohama Marinos in 2019, but now very much established back in the Nagoya Grampus lineup. <laughs> Pohang are preparing to make another change there final one of the evening is Mateus in a gaki Mateus well, they can just enjoy themselves now the Goya Grampus just play the ball around with a little bit of freedom is Yonemoto now you attack up. Never looked troubled, really. It has to be said, they've got the tactics spot on. The sending off of Quang Hoon, of course, hasn't helped Pohang for the, the final stages of the match. The handball that gave away the penalty, leading to a second yellow card. Yamasaki. It's a nice turn. It was an important foot in by Youngjun. Free kick foul by Yonemoto. Now I think the substitution will be made. On well, the side from South Korea, Sang Hyub, who's been impressive tonight, goes off. Particularly in these hot and humid conditions to bomb up and down, bomb up and down that far side for 85 minutes is pretty impressive. And Lee Seok Gyu comes on for his first appearance at the group stages. Made just two appearances in the K-League. First season at the Steelers, actually came off in both games. He's yet to complete a game for Kim Ji Dong's side. Well, he knows his side will have to work hard now over the next couple of days to get themselves back on track. K-League Manager of the Year in 2020, he'll need to show all that guile now to lift his team. That's a heavy challenge and a yellow card for Seung Mo. It's incensed the Nagoya Grampus players, particularly Mateus. Sung Mo giving as good as he's getting here. Well, the Nagoya players need to make sure they don't pick up any unnecessary yellow cards. As I say, if you get booked in two matches, then you would miss a third, or miss the next match, rather. It was late. He had committed a bit of frustration, maybe, in a gaki, the player that felt the full weight of the challenge. Xiong Mo, who came on for the final quarter of the game against Ratchaburi, goes into the book. And it's, uh, well, it's rounding off what's been a disappointing evening for the Koreans, really. Kwang Hoon, of course, will be suspended for the next match against Jordarul. Clubs from Korea may have accumulated the most victories since 2002, but they're not winning here. It's Japan that are taking the points. Subin. Lee Seok Yu. Alex Grant. Might mean a start for Alex Grant in the next game with Quan Hoon suspended. 
he can play at full back or at centre back. So utilising his options will be Kim Ji Dong for the game against Ratchaburi on Sunday. On that Monday rather. And here come Nagoya looking for a fourth goal. That's another late foul and more frustration. And it's Su Bin this time that goes into the book. He doesn't need to make the challenge when you think Yukusoma's going away, going back towards his own goal. He's always going to get a yellow card. It always amazes me the look on players' faces when the referee goes to his pocket. And when you see the challenge again, you realise that the match officials actually had no choice. A little bit of an experience there for the 21-year-old. Ninety seconds plus added time to go. Nagoya Grampus heading for a first win, or second win rather, and going top of the group, 100% record, and at the moment keeping a second consecutive clean sheet. Yutaka. Soma trying to feed the ball down the line. He was closed down by Wenq. Nagoya have made another change. It's the man who scored the goal in the opening match that's come on. Hirojuki Abe. Looks fairly calm today. Massimo Ficadente. He had a, a few blow the fuse moments in the first game when he picked up a yellow card, but he's managed to keep it under control today. His side have helped, of course, by winning this one comfortably. It might be even more comfortable here. It's not a great free kick, not a great delivery that time from Mateus. Yotaka. All the way back to Mitch Langerak, who had only one save to make in the game, that fingertip stop in the first half to deflect the ball wide. Shinosuke. Three minutes added time. At the end of the 90 then, here's Mateus. Yutaka. Just too far out of the reach of Abe. It's the, uh, the man who scored that super, uh, that excellent first goal, Yochiro Kakitani, that's gone off, by the way, for Abe to come on for the final couple of moments. Just a substitution to run down a few seconds off the clock. Here is Abe. Good ball. Mateus, who's on a hat trick. Yamasaki racing through the centre. Ball again, just a little bit out of his reach. Need to curl that one more back into his path. It was always bending in towards the goalkeeper, Hyun Mew. There's Yutaka's header. Yonemoto. Shinosuke. Yutaka. Next game in this group kicks off in a couple of hours' time. Ratchaburi against Jordar all the two sides that lost their opening game, so at least one of those sides will get off the mark in terms of points. Nagoya are preparing to make a final change. Royo, Royo Morishita is waiting to come on. Another player who's just in the midst of his first season with Nagoya, having been at Sagan Tosu. May not even get on here. We're into the third minute of added time already. Yonemoto. Abe. Yutaka. Mateus, lovely touch. Yutaka's just offside. But he might just have stayed onside. It's Mateus that was going in search of what would have been a hat trick, but 
flag on the far side brought that to a premature end. He has got forward on a number of occasions today, Yutaka. It is going to be Yutaka that makes way. And Morishita coming on for, well, just the final 10 seconds, it would appear at the moment, so it may not even get a touch. He's played well today, Yutaka. Yamasaki. Mateus goes for goal and wasn't too far away. Goalkeeper just pulled his hand out of the way, knew he was going wide. But the Brazilian, centimetres away from a, what would have been a fine second half hat trick. That is close. He's been a, a real difference since coming on in the second half. He'll look to get himself back into the starting lineup as the referee brings the game to a close. Yonemoto goes down under a challenge from Song Mo right at the end. It was a little bit of a bad tempered final moment. But Nagoya Grampus have done the job that their coach expected them to do here. Two goals from Mateus Castro, one from the penalty spot after a handball from Quang Hoon saw him sent off for a second yellow card. They took the lead in the first half, 11 minutes before half time. A wonderful shot from Yuchiro Katimani into the corner. And that was the goal that separated the sides until that 65th minute penalty from Mateus and Massimo Ficadenti, who went through a full range of emotions in the first game, has had a slightly calmer time on the sidelines today as his side have overcome the Koreans comfortably in the end. Pohang will go away and regroup ahead of their next match against Jordarol. Back-to-back fixtures in match days three and four for them. But for the moment, it's Nagoya Grampus that take control of the group. Six points out of six, and they've yet to concede a goal. Full-time here in Bangkok, it's finished Nagoya Grampus 3, FC Pohang Steelers nil.